There once was a beautiful jungle that was the home of many different species. There were monkeys, lemurs, snakes, jaguars, panthers, and loads of exotic species of birds. There was a natural circle of life and all the animals thrived. There soon came along a different animal, an animal that was very selfish and that didn't care about the cycle of life that was already in place. That animal was called the human. The human took and took and took all that he wanted and the animals were left with less and less and less. But soon enough, the animals discovered that there wasn't only one type of human. Some humans actually did all they could to help the animals and restore the natural cycle. Which human are you? If you're watching this video, you probably are the kind of human that wants to help the animals. This video will of course be all about Minecraft, but I will be talking a little bit about the endangered species and what you can do to help them. And if you are interested in maybe helping endangered species, I will post this image on my Instagram. Basically, it shows different ways you can help species yourself and have an actual impact. I spent 100 days building a jungle wildlife zoo. So at first I tried doing that in a jungle only world, but the issue was I couldn't get like bamboo forests, all the different biomes that are in a jungle. So I decided to play in a normal world, but I have to stay inside the jungle. If for example, there's a swamp or a plains biome nearby, I am not allowed to go in it. So therefore this will make things a bit more challenging as I won't be able to get all of the resources. All that said, let's dive deep into the jungle. On day one, I spawned, of course, in the jungle and I tried mining this banana tree, but nothing happened. So I decided to look at the animals around the place and I spotted a hummingbird and a monkey. After making myself some stone tools, I was finally able to get my first banana. I then spotted a gibbon in the distance. I'm not super sure it's a gibbon or another type of monkey, but nevertheless, I gave him one of my bananas and he really couldn't care less. And then I met my biggest issue in this 100 days, the carnivorous plant. I then came across some budgies that were swimming around in the water and I got some seeds to see if I could tame them like as I would for a parrot, but sadly, no, you could only breed them like that. I then continued on my way and saw there was a swamp nearby, but as I said in the intro, I'm only allowed to stay in the jungle so I can see the biomes from far, but I cannot go in them. I was delighted to find a couple of orangutans, which were really adorable. And then I went deep into the jungle and a skeleton shot at me. So I quickly buried myself into a cozy hole. I did a bit of mining and then on day two, I decided to finally fight off the skeleton as I had a shield. I did my best to avoid the scary plants and then I spotted some ants carrying some leaves and I was really amazed at how they actually picked up leaves from the bushes around them. A little deeper in the jungle, I found a jungle temple and so I went down, being careful not to get shot at and I actually got two diamonds in one of the chests so that was quite exciting. On day three, I made a boat and traveled down the stream where I found some cranes. That evening, I spotted a little creature running about in the distance and it was actually a capuchin monkey. And this time he did care about the bananas a lot and I was even able to carry him on my shoulder. We found this cave and decided to spend the night there. I started off by mining the iron and the coal that was around me and then, very important, I blocked off all the openings so that monsters wouldn't attack me and the capuchin on my shoulder actually threw cobblestone at a creeper to kill him so I decided to call him Cobble. On day four, I started terraforming the entrance of my cave home and then I saw a gecko and I killed off a few of the angry plants, you know, just to protect the animals that were around me and myself as well. 
I then spotted an adorable little animal, and this is actually the cute little mouse animal that's in Madagascar the movie, so yeah, I thought that was just so cute to see it in Minecraft. Okay, so listen to my super, super bad plan. So basically, I went to spend the night near the swamp, hoping that a slime would spawn, and that the slime would actually bounce into the jungle biome. So I don't know how I thought that would happen, and of course it didn't, so yeah, that idea was just bad. But on the good side, on day five, I spotted a sheep and a cow. So that meant I couldn't breed them, but I could get some wool and I was able to craft myself a bed. On day six, I noticed the cow was swimming to the other side, so I quickly prevented her to go in the plains biome because if she went in, well, you know, there was no way for me to get her. So thankfully, I managed. I then spotted a lemur, another Madagascar animal, and then I found a broken portal as well as a sunken ship. In a chest, I was so happy to once again find two diamonds, and as I now had a treasure map, I decided I would go find the treasure. I was actually hoping that the treasure would be near the jungle and not in another biome, or else I wouldn't be able to get it, but thankfully it was on a beach glued to the jungle. I was quite far from where I had originally spawned and I thought, why not do like a full circle around the jungle biome to kind of see what kind of animals I could find. On a beach I found some turtles, some seals as well as a gecko and then further off I found this toucan but basically he was flying so high up in the sky that there was no way for me to get to him and I wasn't able to get him in a cage. I came across this gazelle that had wandered off in the jungle, but of course she wasn't part of it so I couldn't get her for my zoo. And then I found some awesome gorillas, they were like so majestic, but once again I was super far from home and I did not have any leads on me. On day 9 I found a kingfisher and I was able to get him in a cage, so I guess that was my second pet. And right after I tamed yet another capuchin monkey and I found these glowing insects, so I had no clue what they were, but yeah. <laughs> On day 10 I spotted some more lemurs and then I arrived back home. I named my second capuchin Stone, yes I know it's not original, it's just for the cobble stone. I then went to get a bit of wood and that's when I spotted this funny little creature with a little white moustache and I wasn't really sure what it was. I then went looking for a panda in the bamboo jungle because basically when the baby pandas sneeze you could get a slime ball sometimes if you're lucky. So that was basically what I was hoping and the panda I found was actually a sick panda so that was pretty cool. I also spotted some tigers and they seemed pretty scary when I read about them so yeah I kept my distance and one actually became invisible with only the red eyes showing so I was like okay let's get out of here panda. I decided to name the sick panda Snotty, you know why. <laughs> and then I actually came across the budgies so I decided to bring them back as well as Snotty. As I was bringing them back, I realized that so many angry plants had spawned and I just couldn't pass, so I had to go all around up a cliff with the animals, so that was quite tricky, but we all managed to make it safely home. From days 13 to 14, I fed Snotty and got some gravel, and then I wandered off and I actually found two chickens. Well, there were three, but I decided to only bring back two. And then when the evening came, they were all safely home. On day 15, I decided to start farming a little bit. I actually used some bone meal to get some wheat pretty quickly because I wanted to get the sheep and the cow back to the cave. I spotted some more animals and in the evening I decided to have a look just from the water, you know, at some funny little penguins that were on a beach so it was really cute but of course I couldn't bring them back home. On day 16, I brought the sheep and the cow back home, but sadly Cobble was off my shoulder and got killed by a carnivorous plant, and Cobble will for sure be missed. So I wanted to build my jungle zoo up in the trees because, you know, that would be way more exciting to do as I have the possibility of having huge jungle trees 
And so that is what I did. I planted some 4x4 saplings to make some large trees. From days 19 to 21, I went down mining because I needed to get some diamonds to get better armor because I knew there were some dangerous animals as well as dangerous plants out there and I really needed to be protected. Luckily enough, I didn't struggle too much to find diamonds and it really was quite relaxing. I quite like the mining in Minecraft, it's just quite relaxing and then when you find diamonds you're like a little bit excited and I also found this cave and there were like literally diamonds so close to each other in the cave so that was a really good cave. On day 22 I started terraforming because basically I wanted to make like a sort of little enclosure where I would put all the animals I managed to get and then gradually I will bring them up in the trees. And so I started by bringing my cow, my sheep, my chickens, and of course, Snotty. I then decided to get Snotty a companion, and I found this super happy panda, but there was no way I could get the panda back on its feet. It was just so happy on his back. To my surprise, as I was holding some bamboo in my hand, two red pandas came out of nowhere and followed me. Sadly, one drowned when I was near a lake, which was a bit disappointing. But nevertheless, I carefully made it home with the two pandas, trying my best to avoid the carnivorous plants because, yeah, they're not very nice. But for some reason, when I fed the red panda some bamboo, my game would crash, like it crashed twice or three times and then I just stopped feeding the panda. <laughs> I have no clue why that was. On day 26 I was trying to get a budgie to the enclosure, but sadly it was eaten by the carnivorous plants. And then I randomly fell in a hole and when I came back out I was the one they munched on, so yeah, they were quite a nuisance. On day 27, I noticed that some of the animals were climbing up the banana tree and I was like, why was that happening? Sadly, I lost another capuchin monkey to a carnivorous plant, so yeah, that was just annoying and I felt like that would happen so many times. I brought all my birds over to the enclosure and then I realized that you could actually climb up banana trees on the side that the bananas grew. I also discovered that you can make a neg incubator and a neg analyzer and basically all the eggs I would find in nests that were basically mystery eggs, I could just put them in with some redstone dust and I could actually get loads of eggs from different species. I traveled back into the jungle and I came across some lovely flamingos, they really looked awesome and I also found some macaws and two other toucans. On day 29 I came across the super happy panda that was still on its back, there was nothing we could do about it. As they were flightless I released the flamingos in the enclosure and then I started working on my trees again for the big zoo. On day 30 I almost died once again because of the plants so yeah that was a little bit scary and then I decided to continue working on my elevated zoo. So basically I started off by connecting the trees together with like very simple bridges. On day 31 I knew I really needed some slime to make some leads and so I basically just afk'd at the farm, just bred the pandas together and just hoped that a baby would sneeze a slime ball. On day 32 I decided to make a little dirt staircase going up so that I could bring some grass to the tree zoo. Finally on day 33 I got a slime ball. I was just so happy I could now bring back all the animals I wanted to bring back. On day 34 I continued working on the zoo so I started by making like some small dirt enclosures around the tree trunks because I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do, I hadn't planned this out. So basically I connected you know all the trees together with bridges and then I started making an enclosure in the middle of two bridges so not necessarily near a tree. I really really needed to get some arrows because when I tried killing the plants with a sword they would just destroy me so I sadly had to kill quite a few of my chickens. On day 39 I went into the jungle to mine, you know, one of the huge trees so that I would basically get a lot of wood. 
That night I went out to fight some monsters and especially spiders so that I was able to craft myself some leads. And on day 40, guess what? A creeper blew up my farm, which meant that all the chickens ran out. Everything ran out. It was just a nightmare. And then I tried bringing the chickens up and they kept falling and I only got like three up, so that was ridiculous. Then I tried to get a panda up and he fell and died. So yeah, this really was a nightmare. So I really didn't mind them being free. That wasn't the problem. It was more the fact that some plants could literally eat them and destroy them and I would never see them again. On day 41, I went back into the jungle to try and find some new species and I saw this black panther. I don't know why I shot at it. I, I just didn't know what to do. And she was angry. Look at her run after me. It was so bad. I tried killing her, but she was swimming under my boat and I could still get damage. And I died. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't careful enough, I guess. So panthers and jaguars are actually going extinct due to illegal hunting, deforestation, and loss of wild prey. So yeah, most of the animals you will see in this video are actually endangered, and this is quite sad. I know this is a game and, you know, we shouldn't be thinking about that, but I thought it's still good to put the subject out. On day 42, I went back to get my stuff and I realized that the panther was actually in the boat and I could actually go in the boat with her, so that was quite handy. She couldn't hurt me anymore. Further off, I also spotted a sleeping tiger, so I made sure not to shoot at him. And I also found some snakes as well as some red pandas. And at this precise moment, my heart stopped. Basically, I was bringing the red pandas back home and this green snake was racing towards me like oh my god that scared me so much so yeah i made the rest of my way in the water being as silly as can be i saw this tiny frog and i just had to go see it and it stung me or whatever you want to call it so yeah i got poisoned and almost died when i finally arrived back home i bought my red pandas up but sadly, one of them died, so I only had two, but oh well. I decided to bring back some orangutans. So a quick fact on orangutans, which is quite sad. You might have heard about it. So basically, the orangutan population is under threat due to extensive habitat loss because of the increase of logging, palm oil production, agricultural expansion, etc. So obviously there is not much we can do to stop that. We are not superheroes. But for example, one thing we could all do is try to avoid products that have palm oil in them. On day 46, I made the panda enclosure and I bought all the pandas, the normal ones and the red ones in. On day 47, I continued extending my zoo. So I would make loads of bridges and I would place leaves on the sides to make it look a bit nicer. So let me tell you a bit why I decided to make this video, like how I chose the subject. So of course I love animals, so that was the main reason, but also it was to maybe like give you a few facts, you know, about the animals and especially the animals that live in jungles are really endangered species because what happens is, so some human beings decide to burn jungles like the Amazon rainforest, to make more space for farmland, for farming palm oil, but it can be anything else. And this basically reduces the habitat for animals and some are caught up in the fire and it just gets really bad because the animals at the top of the food chain cannot feed on the animals at the bottom of the food chain anymore. So yeah, I know we cannot do much about it, but it's still good to spread awareness about this. But of course, I cannot just talk about a problem without giving a few solutions. So of course, never buy products made from endangered and threatened animals. So I think that's the most logical one. <laughs> you could also travel the world, you know, to learn more about the animals, but you have to be careful to never participate in activities such as riding wild animals or, you know, taking selfies with wild animals because the people who own places like that just use the animals for making money. You know, they're not thinking about the animal at all. 
In your garden, you have to try and garden without using pesticides and products. You could also recycle more, be careful of what you buy. So yeah, here were a few ideas of what you could do. On day 56, I went back into the jungle and I decided I would finally capture the Black Panther. So basically, I was able to make some cage traps out of trap doors. And all I had to do is place the trap near the panther and it caught her. I then wanted to do the same with the tiger, but he jumped over the traps and almost killed me. So that was really terrifying. And somehow he got caught up in the trap. On day 57, I went to get the snakes and I thought they would attack me, but no, I just had to push them in the cage traps. I also managed to get a red panda and I discovered some lovely little plants along the way and I got plenty to decorate my flamingo farm. I also released the gorillas I'd found in a temporary enclosure. On day 61, I went to explore the jungle once again. I found some capuchin monkeys and captured them in a trap and then I spotted some crocodiles and I was quite careful to keep my distance while I was getting them in a trap because yeah I didn't really want to die lost in the middle of a jungle. On day 62 I was excited to find another jungle temple but sadly the loot was not very good. I then captured some ocelots and then I found this super strange creature. It was probably another creature that was in Madagascar. <laughs> but yeah, I really don't know the name. I have to find it. Okay, I've got it. Basically, it's an I.I. lemur. <laughs> it's actually that. On day 63, I was running out of dirt and so I went deep into the jungle to mine loads of dirt underground. On day 64, I really spent the whole day building enclosures, so I built an enclosure for all the monkeys and then I decided to build an enclosure and I didn't really know for which animal it would be, but what was very unique to that enclosure is that it was on different levels, so yeah, I guess we will soon discover what animal I decide to put in. On day 65, I captured some lemurs and I put them in with the pandas, so I expect I will make an enclosure in the future for, you know, just lemurs altogether, but for the moment, I put them in with the pandas. From day 66 to 68, I started working on the feline enclosure where I would be putting my panther and my tiger and I couldn't open the tiger enclosure but that was because I'd placed the trap right next to a tree and yeah I managed to release the tiger and he was quite happy. I then made a snake enclosure and I actually wanted it to be like a sort of walk-in enclosure. So with a bit of redstone, I managed to do something okay. Basically, when you press down the levers, it would close and open the gates so that the snakes, you know, couldn't get to me and I could just pass through. I don't know. I went in this complicated thing and it wasn't that amazing in the end. On day 69, I put all the monkeys in their enclosure and I accidentally hit a capuchin monkey and he almost killed me. Like, yeah, I'm better off taming capuchins the next time. On day 70, it was raining heavily, but I still decided to set out and find some animals. So I got a snub-nosed monkey and the little creature with a mustache is called the Emperor Tamarin. On day 71, I captured another snub-nosed monkey and a sort of little mouse. I have no clue what it was. And now get ready to probably the scariest moment of this 100 days. Basically, I spotted some black bears and I thought I was, you know, super discreet. And that black bear gave me a jump scare. That was, <laughs> it really freaked me out. And with literally a hundred trap cages, I managed to get him and his girlfriend that was sleeping nearby. On day 73, I decided that I would put the black bears in the sort of different level enclosure, that's what we could call it. And I also started working on an enclosure for all the exotic birds. So of course it had to be an enclosure that was closed up from the top, 
or else all the birds would fly out and that would not be very handy. And then, silly little Tootsie, I must have clicked accidentally on my recording software and it just all went wonky so I had to zoom in so that it looks almost normal. I'm so sorry, this part of the video is hideous. <laughs> but thankfully, I will sort it out pretty soon. I then released all the birds I had collected in their brand new enclosure. From day 78 to 82, I decided I would enter the nether. And that is because I wanted to get some blaze rods because I could therefore hatch, you know, all the mystery eggs I had collected. By the way, to make it more exciting, I had actually put a mod to make the nether a little more exotic and that is why there were some funny little creatures and some trees and strange fruit. I also spotted a creature that really looked like a nether axolotl and there was also this sort of stone guy that was throwing whatever at me so <laughs> I quickly ran away. I made myself some golden boots to go safely by a piglin bastion and then I went in the crimson forest and got attacked by so many crimson mosquitoes and I also found these weird cactuses, I don't know what they were. And finally I found a nether fortress. I started off by killing a few skeletons that were in the way and then I killed off my first blaze as well as a wither skeleton that was passing by. I then luckily found a blaze spawner that was partially covered up so that it was quite easy, you know, to kill them off. They weren't just flying away and throwing their fireballs at me. So yeah, I killed quite a few to have a good amount of blaze rods and then I returned back to the jungle. On day 83, I put some blaze powder in the egg incubator and then I just had loads of different birds. I had ostriches, swans, I had just, you know, birds that didn't necessarily belong in the jungle, but you know, <laughs> it was just by curiosity. I wanted to see all the different birds. On day 84, I released my black bears in their enclosure and oh my, it did not go as planned at all. One of the black bears actually flew over the enclosure and came to attack me. Thankfully, I had my bird enclosure that was all covered up or else I would be dead. And then that little black bear just jumped. Thankfully, there was some water under and I was able to go get him, capture him in the cage and then I, you know, lifted up the walls a bit higher, you know, so that it wouldn't happen again. I then released for the second time the bears and just hoped that I wouldn't get attacked once again. From days 86 to 87, all was well, you know, the black bears were just chilling in their enclosure, not wanting to attack me necessarily. And by the end of the day, I made an enclosure for the ocelots. I then started on the enclosure for the crocodiles I had captured. So I made a one block deep pond in the center of the enclosure and the rest would just be grass with like nice vegetation. So once the pond was done, I added some seagrass as well as some grass, banana trees, flowers, etc, etc. It was now time to set free the crocodiles, so of course I had to be quite careful, and I was, and actually all went well. I didn't take any damage at all, which is quite rare for me. <laughs> and then I placed loads of leaves around the enclosure to make everything look nice. On day 90, I wanted to make a 100% aquatic enclosure, so I started off by you know, making a pond that was two blocks deep. So I quickly realized I did not have enough dirt. So I returned to my big dirt hole <laughs> and just got loads of dirt. I mean, this is the best way to get dirt because if you do it at the surface, it will just look too hideous. So yeah, when you're getting dirt, always go far away from your base and underground. On day 92, I set off to find some aquatic animals, so I knew for sure I wanted some turtles, so now I just had to look around in all the ponds to find some turtles and maybe some exotic fish. 
Of course, I had to waste off my day chasing ocelots and I only got one. And the second one I chased the whole day and, you know, just didn't get him. On day 93, I was so excited to come across some river dolphins. So yeah, they're pink dolphins and they are actually endangered species as well. And a quick fact on pink river dolphins, actually they have the largest bodies and brains of any freshwater dolphin. And they can actually live up to 30 years old. I also managed to get some turtles and this one kept escaping the enclosure so I had to get it back. And I made a little glass wall around the place and as you can see I made a bridge out of glass so I could see the dolphins swimming under me. That night, I started building the enclosures that would be for all the different lemurs. I continued to do so on day 96, and then I set out once again in the jungle to try and find a few more animals before the 100 days was over. I noticed that a carnivorous plant was looking at something, and it was actually a jaguar. Well, to be honest, I'm not super sure if it was a jaguar or a leopard, but let's say it was a jaguar. On day 97, I spotted a strange fish in the water. It was actually a catfish. And then I captured another jaguar and found this strange flower, and I tried to pick it up and it just destroyed it. On day 98, I released the fish and the jaguars in their enclosures and I continued making a few more enclosures for the zoo. On day 99, I captured the lemurs and put them in their own enclosure and then I actually decided I would get the jaguars in their separate enclosure because just having all the big cats in one enclosure wasn't very smart, you know, I had just a huge enclosure just for them and they seemed quite happy about that. On day 100, the zoo was finally accomplished and I went around to look at the incredible work we had done in 100 days. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to share things, you can leave your thoughts in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. Love you!